Hey everyone, Kimo here, and welcome to my home. I am so excited today to participate in the Inspired Fall DIY Challenge, and for me, there's no better fall inspiration than Halloween. For this challenge, I'm gonna be creating scary, creepy, glow-in-the-dark specimen jars that any mad scientist would be proud of. This challenge is hosted by Elena at Elena Jenkins DIY and also Linda at Faith Chick 777's DIY by Design. Both of these ladies are incredible makers and they focus on things like DIY projects and home decor and I encourage you to go and check them out. I've got links to their channels in my description box below as well as a link to the playlist where you'll find the videos from all the makers who are participating in this challenge. So please go ahead and show them some love and support and let them know that Chemocraft sent you. This project is so much fun and so easy to do and you are going to love our secret weapon. Highlighters from the Dollar Tree. They come three in a pack like this and these highlighters, believe it or not, are really going to help our specimen jars to glow. Before we go any further, please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video to my channel. And I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of this scary, creepy, glow-in-the-dark specimen jar project. All right, let's get going. So for our project, I decided to use jars from the thrift store. I could have gotten mason jars from Dollar Tree, but I think that getting a nice variety of different kinds of jars is perfect for this project. But from the Dollar Tree, I did get this glass candlestick that we're going to attach to the bottom of a couple of our jars using E6000 glue. Adding these candlesticks to the bottom of the jars will give it kind of an apothecary jar look, as well as elevate these jars to give different levels of height. For best results, let that glue uh, have a chance to cure overnight. Now I got several items from the Dollar Tree that we're going to put into our specimen jars, starting with this cat toy. Love that little furry tail. And we also have some toys that I got out from the, uh, the kids' toy section, like that little uh, three-legged three monster and this kind of squishy toy as well. And I'm going to alter some of these items more than others. For the cat toy, we're simply just going to tear off the tags and put those in. But for these kids' toys here, I didn't like that big eye in there, and so I'm just taking a Sharpie and adding some black around the Sharpie so that we have sort of some indistingu indistinguishable features. Can't say that word. And the same thing for this one. I'm actually going to punch or cut a hole into here um, so that we're going to let some of the air out, but I'm also going to uh, color over those eyes in a black sharpie as well. So with some of the air deflated, this actually turns out to be one of my favorite items that we put in the specimen jar. During this time of year, Dollar Tree also has some really great Halloween decor, including these uh, skeletons of different animals. I just realized that one of them already doesn't have a head. Oh well. And so I'm going to simply tear off some of these bones, and these little bone pieces are going to go in some of the jars as well. So here we've got lots of bones and skeleton parts to work with. Now I wanted to put together at least one unusual creature, so I decided to make a skeleton mermaid. And I have a few items that are going to help me to do that from the Dollar Tree. First these little skeletons, human skeletons, and you can see that I'm clipping off both the arms and the legs. The legs I'm clipping off because it's a mermaid and we don't need those for this particular project, but I also clipped off the arms in order to reposition them and so you can see I've got some feet that I'm going to use and I'm going to put those in one of the specimen jars but going to the whale I am using a knife to cut off the top portion of that whale and we're going to use the bottom portion for our mermaid tail.
Now, the tail seemed to be at the right length, but it was way too big to fit in that skeleton, so I'm using a heat gun here to shrink some of that down and a scissors to cut out parts uh, of the tail just so that I can make it fit a little better. Now that the inside of the tail is a little smaller, I'm gonna use uh, some hot glue to glue that portion or that skeleton into the tail. Here, I'm gluing back on the arms, but in a way that makes a little bit more sense to me if this merman is gonna be in a jar. Now I don't have a doll or any doll hair on hand, but I did have some purple yarn which I'm gonna to use to create hair for our mermaid. You can see that I'm wrapping around that yarn on my fingers, almost as if I'm gonna make a tassel. You can see here that I'm trying to brush out that yarn. I think it worked pretty well. If I had more patience, probably it would have turned out a little bit better. But I think that for the most part, we have what we need for mermaid hair, and we're gonna glue that on with some hot glue. Now we're gonna make some glow in the dark water to put in our specimen jars. And as a reminder, we're using these highlighters that I got from Dollar Tree. They come three in a pack. And you can see on one end where you normally remove the cap, that's where you use the highlighter. But we're interested in removing the other end of the pen. I'm putting on a glove for this part of the project because we're gonna be handling some highlighter juice, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And you can see that that just slid out the other end of our highlighter, and I'm basically gonna milk it as much as I can. And when I milk it, this fluorescent liquid comes out into our jar. I'm just gonna add some water to that jar, and I just use one highlighter. I'm gonna not quite fill it up all the way so that we have room to put our items into our specimen jar. And look at that awesome glow in the dark juice, it's so cool. I'm gonna put some of these insects, these plastic insects that came in a couple of bags from Dollar Tree. And you can see that I just need to kind of fit them in there. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to fill that water line to the top. For a couple of our toys that were kind of filled with air like this one was, I put more snips into it and made sure that we got some water inside of the toy so that it could weigh it down. With all of our objects now inside the specimen jars, we need to talk about lighting. In this case, I decided to use some submersible lights that I had left over, and you can see that once those lights go into that jar, man, that glow is so incredible. If you don't have submersible votive candles like this, you can also consider a black light or even some strategically placed votive candles in between the jars. And here is our final result. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video, and happy Halloween.